Hi, I'm Dimitri, and in this video, I'll show you how to track time through Clockify's timesheet. Employees who need to input a large amount of time at the end of the day will find the timesheet view a much faster method for adding time. Let's dive right into it. In case you don't see timesheet in your sidebar menu, click on the three dots at the top left and choose Workspace Settings. Here you'll have the option to activate timesheet. Toggle the switch and the timesheet will be ready to use. When we enter the timesheet tab, you'll see an overview of your week day by day. To add time to it, first we need to choose a project by clicking here. A list of all of your projects will be displayed. Select the project that you want to lock time on, click on it, and then enter the time. If you set the duration format as decimal in the workspace settings, you can just type 2 and it'll become 2 hours. You can also change when the week starts in settings so that the timesheet reflects it. Time Tracker, Calendar, and Timesheet all share the same data so you can use them interchangeably. Just like I mentioned in the calendar tutorial. The total number of hours will be displayed for each day here, for each project here, and for the whole week here. For each new project that you want to add, click on the Add New Row button. A new row will appear in the timesheet, offering you a list of projects to choose from again. If you click on this little expand icon, a new window will open up, and you can find the project you need more easily. Also, you can search for the project name or client in the search bar. To search for tasks, turn on the task filter and personal preferences. If you'd like to record working on a specific task for a project, expand the task list by clicking on the drop-down icon, and then you can select the task you need. Now next to the project's name, you have the task. To add more details to an entry, or to edit its existing values, click on the three dots next to the entered hours. Now we see a pop-up window that allows you to change the entry's duration, write a multiple line description, add tags, or change the billable status. If you want to change the project you accidentally added, click on the project name in the timesheet row, and then select a new project from the list. A recorded entry can also be deleted. You do that by clicking on these three dots next to the number of hours, and then again on the bottom left, and finally choosing the delete option. The timesheet also allows you to switch between your own timesheet and your team's timesheets. To see someone else's timesheet, click on the teammates filter and then choose a person from the list. Or use a search bar to find them. This way you can also add time for someone else. Navigating between weeks in the timesheet is easy. Just click on these arrows. And finally, if you'd like to expand or reduce the timesheet row size, click on this icon. A quick way to fill in your timesheet is to apply the copy last week option. By clicking on it, Clockify will offer you the choice between applying only recorded activities or applying both activities and their associated time. After you choose a preferable option, your timesheet will be automatically populated. Besides that, Clockify also allows you to use timesheet templates to quickly populate your timesheets. To save your typical work week as a template, just click on the Save as Template button, give the template a name, and mark the option to save recorded hours if you want to. If not, you can leave it unchecked to save only the recorded projects and tasks. You can do this as many times as you need, in order to have a typical working week easily accessible. To apply a template to your current timesheet, click the Apply option in the Timesheet Templates list. Once the template has been applied, the status will be changed to Applied. You can also combine multiple timesheet templates in the same week. After you apply a template, you can change the entry details or add a new project in the usual way. If people forget to log their time, you can set reminders on the team page. For example, you can set that everyone who tracked less than 40 hours at the end of the week will get an automatic email reminding them to add their hours. Timesheets can be submitted for approval. First of all, the approval feature should be enabled. Let's go to the workspace settings, scroll down in the general tab, and switch the approval feature on. Below, you'll have the option to set approval periods to weekly, semi-monthly, or monthly. Now you'll notice the Submit for Approval button below the timesheets. After the timesheet has been filled out, click on the Submit for Approval button. After confirming the choice, the timesheet will have a pending label. To set who will be reviewing and approving timesheets, let's go to the Workspace Settings and choose the Permissions tab. We have the Who can approve submitted timesheets and expenses option. By marking Admins and Team Managers, 
team managers can approve timesheets and expenses submitted by their assigned team members. And by marking admins and project managers, project managers will be able to approve timesheets and expenses for all the submissions on projects they manage. In both cases, admins can approve time for everyone. To manage approval, choose the Approval section in Clockify sidebar. The Pending tab lists all pending requests. These can be approved in bulk or reviewed and approved one by one by clicking on the request to show more details. Let's say there's a little mistake in your timesheet. A submitted approval request can also be rejected. Click Reject and type in what needs to be corrected before the timesheet is submitted again. If there is a mistake in an already approved timesheet, the approval can be withdrawn. Just go to the Archive tab, open the request by clicking on it, and then click the Withdraw Approval button. You can enter a note as well. In the Pending tab, you can also remind managers to approve submitted timesheets. Just click on the Remind to Approve button, and then clicking on Send for reminders to be sent. In the Unsubmitted tab, you can see who hasn't submitted their timesheet. And you can also see users who have no log time. If you click on the Remind to Submit button, and then Send, all users who have log time but not submitted their timesheets will receive a reminder to do so. Clicking on the Show Users Without Time and Expenses shows you all of the members without any recorded hours. All members without the recorded time will be notified to log and submit their timesheets. The approval process can be managed efficiently by using the filtering in the tabs. For example, in the Pending tab, you can filter out requests by team groups and handle approval team by team. And you can also sort the requests by date or by user. In the Unsubmitted tab, you can navigate through the weeks and also display information for certain teams only. Filtering in the Archive tab works pretty similarly. You have filtering options showing requests by date or user, by team groups, and with an additional filter showing you all, only approved, or withdrawn requests. To prevent any further changes or edits to a recorded time, timesheets can be locked. To do that, go to the Workspace Settings and then open the Permissions tab. Scroll all the way down and you'll see the option to lock time and expenses. Select Automatically Update Lock Date. You can choose the lock frequency to be weekly, monthly, or older than X days, weeks, or months. When selecting the weekly option, you have to choose two days. The first is when the lock date gets updated, let's take Wednesday, and the first day of the week in your company, Monday. This way, when a new week starts, on Monday, your team can still add their missing hours for the previous week before the week gets locked, which happens on Wednesday. For the monthly option, you should choose only the day of the month and the time of day in which time entries should be locked. And when you set an auto-update lock date older than one day, it means that at the end of the day, the lock date will be automatically updated so users can't edit yesterday's hours. Tracking time through a timesheet on a phone works pretty much the same way. First, you need to enable timesheet in the web app. If you don't have any recorded entries for that week, you'll see the option to copy last week's entries. If you tap on it, Clockify will copy all entries from the previous week. From there, you can edit entries to match this week's schedule. Tap on the three dots next to the entry you want to change, and then choose if you want to change a project or a task. You'll also have the option to add new ones in case that you don't have them on the list. Tap on the plus button at the bottom right, and then you can choose a project. Now you can create entries for each day separately by tapping on the day displayed on that project's window. If you often work on the same things, you can save timesheets as templates. In the top right corner, tap on these three dots. Add the template name, and then tap Create. Now, when you open a week with no entries, there will be a new option to apply a template. Choose which template you want to apply, and Clockify will copy those entries to that week. As for the iOS version of the app, the timesheet feature is pretty much the same, save for some visual differences. You'll see the option to copy last week's entries. Tap on the entry that you want to edit, and then choose if you want to change a project or a task. Now you can create entries for each day separately. You can save timesheets as templates. Add the template name, and then tap Done. 
Apart from the copy last week's entries option, you'll also see the option to apply a template. If you're looking to learn more about Quackify's features and time tracking in general, you can check out our YouTube channel. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.